Wouter Tulp is the illustrator of over 100 children's books and a character designer at Sony Pictures Animation. In this mini-series, Wouter shares with Bobby his love of character design, his techniques and processes, and gives us a peek into his newest schoolism course, Conceptual Characters with Wouter Tulp. We hope you enjoy it! So, Wouter, thank you so much for taking some time to uh, speak with me. I wanted to talk about your new class on schoolism. Um, can you kind of give me an overview on what Conceptual Characters with Wouter Tulp is about? Well, the idea for this course started with me when I found myself doing a lot of work for studios where it wasn't just about my drawing skills, but I was really asked to come up with ideas. And it is something that I think is sometimes overlooked. So I thought, what if I could share my process of coming up with ideas? And also because I feel that uh, ideas can uh, feel sometimes like such an elusive things that you can't grasp. But in my opinion, developing ideas also has a lot of techniques. Uh, you know, you, you can have a lot of techniques to develop ideas just as you have for constructing perspective or uh, adding light and color to your designs. Now, um, of course, we're here to talk about your class, but I also just want to just have a conversation with you, you know, especially because the whole entire idea of creating ideas is a very interesting thing to me. Um, I'm in that space as well. And I always felt, felt like it was interesting when people would say, okay, so here's the here's your project. This is what you're going to design. We don't really know what it is yet. We want some good ideas from you. How long will it take? And it's like, well, if I am building a building, I know how long I could possibly, you know, figure out how long it'll take. But to have an idea of how long it would take for a good idea to appear in your head is kind of like, how would you figure that out? Now, I, I want to kind of hear your take on it. Well, it is hard to, to really put a time on it. Uh, on the other hand, if they say you have two days to come up with an idea, you will, in most cases, you will have something by the end of that time. So there is a way where you can, uh, I, I don't know, it's not really pushing the ideas, but it, it constructing your your thoughts in such a way that ideas will evolve. And I think most of us will have had that I, uh, that moment where you're, uh, taking a walk or you're in the bath or when you wake up suddenly there is this this idea that uh, before you were really pressing hard and trying to come up with something and nothing happened you know when you're in the bathtub doing nothing suddenly there's this idea and I think that's a vital part of the process which in the course I call incubation to really uh, schedule time for to relax your mind. So you start by filling your mind with all the information that you can. You start associating and uh, searching for references and all kinds of input. And very often you will already have initial ideas. And most of the time, these are ideas that m most of us will come up with because it's a combination of a couple of things. And we all, you know, if I, if I say uh, uh, a reindeer and a guy in a red suit, we all think of Santa or, or something Christmas related. But if you wanna have an original idea, you have to dig a little deeper. And very often when you fill your head with information and you let it, uh, you know, you let it cook for a while without pushing too hard and let your, your brain do the do the work while you're sleeping, then often you your mind connects the dots and and uh, great ideas appear. I would love to expand on that. You know, I've heard of like people, a lot of very high level uh, talented people doing that kind of stuff where they give their brain an assignment before they go to sleep kind of thing like Hemingway mm. I heard that that's how he did a lot of his problem solving with his writing so can you kind of can we delve into that into more detail like um when you are you you've been observing a lot of stuff you've been looking at all the material you know understanding it now it's time to go to sleep um do you still have all those materials in your head? You're trying to picture them consciously and then you tell your brain, okay, figure it out. Like, how does that happen? How does that work for you? 
Well, for me, I found that walking is is uh, a good way for me, better than sleeping even. So um, what I do, I I, uh, I read the assignment. I know what is expected of me. And uh, beside the information that they give me, I try to associate, try to think what does it make me think of. So there, then I start to add all this information that's not directly related to the subject, but sometimes has to do with my personal experiences or uh, things that I, I have seen uh, that I think are related. Maybe someone else doesn't even think it's related. Or sometimes something comes to mind where I don't even understand why it comes to mind, but it makes me feel of a kind of uh, mood or atmosphere or color. And it's just without uh, discriminating, just putting all the information in your mind. And then I go for a walk. And while I'm walking, still things come up and I have a notebook and I just are write you all consciously, the things. Are you consciously trying to think of ideas or are you yes. just trying to go for a walk? Well, at, at first, the first part of the walk is really uh, consciously writing everything down that comes to mind. Um, uh, most of it are uh, ideas where you where you try to push and and you just feel, sometimes you feel like you're stuck and you feel like nothing's coming anymore i have you know depleted all my resources and this is it and then is that's the moment where i just start walking and just start looking around and stop thinking about it and then suddenly there is this this idea that you know it and it, very often it feels like you're walk not literally but in your mind you're walking towards solving the problem in in one direction and it's like you you kind of shift and attack the problem from a slightly different angle and it's it's the same uh concept but you connect the dots in such a different way and it's it's like hopping on a on a different track or something and then suddenly it opens possibilities and what i found is uh there are, there's unique ideas and there's variations so uh and it's important to make a difference between the two because uh, if you're not aware of it, you could be presenting variations of the same idea to a director, which is basically all the same idea, uh, which is important because sometimes a certain iteration of an idea will work much better than another. But if you can present unique ideas, that it, those are basically the doors to uh, to which the, they, that lead to all the variations. So if you can, uh, I try to come up with as much unique ideas as possible because for me, coming up with the variations afterwards is all, always much easier because that's just rearranging the, the different elements of that idea. That makes total sense. And when you say like when you're going for, you know, then you start going for a walk and then you're not thinking about it. Right. So if you really think about what you are thinking about as you're walking, what, what would that be? Uh, you know, is it you're consciously trying to blank out your mind so you're not thinking about the groceries and the television show? Because we we tend to drift. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and if our mind is occupied thinking about some television show while we're walking, I doubt a lot of good ideas will come in as easily. Hmm. Oh, I see what you mean. Um, I, I distinguish the, the several uh, parts of the process. The first part would be the preparation. So that's the really where I, I uh, fill my mind with all the information. And then uh, the incubation part, that's, I think it wouldn't be a problem if, if that's where you think of groceries or something else, because I think subconsciously, uh, if you have worked so hard to fill your mind and think about, you know, the problem for so long, I think it's a good thing to relax your mind and, and take a break from, from that problem. And, you know, uh, playing soccer or, 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 you know, watching Netflix or doing something that doesn't occupy the mind for that problem. I think that's, that's really where the subconscious part of the brain starts connecting the dots. Let me let me share something with you, and I I think I I wonder if it's the same thing, you know. So we both have a lot of the same kind of assignments, kind of like this, and we would both fill our minds with as much info as possible, and 
for me, I'm filling my mind to the point where I will start thinking about this stuff whether I like it or not. Kind of like if people can relate to playing a video game and you play that video game so much. Like I remember playing Tetris so much that when I closed my eyes and was going to sleep, <laughs> what do you see? You see Tetris yeah. pieces. You can't yes. help but to move them around whether you like yeah. it or not. And that's what we're really talking about, about truly filling your mind to the to yeah. the rim right absolutely yes thank you so much for taking some time and and for those of you out there that wants to you know use this in practice an easy way is definitely sign up for Wouter's class he has a whole bunch of lessons all about conceptualizing characters conceptual characters with Wouter Tulp on schoolism.com <laughs>